You both said today that you love each other and I believe it, but I'm trying to tell you love is not enough for a successful marriage. There's so many other things that go in it. It's not just about you anymore. Here is today's case. My wife has what I believe is a bad gambling addiction problem. How often are you gambling? Mm, once or twice a day. So the next morning when I got up and I checked the banking account statements, $2,000 were missing. Did you lose the $2,000 gambling? I did take that $2,000, I will mention that, and I did go gamble, but I won back $3,000. Whether or not you win it back doesn't mean that you don't have a problem. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Galindo versus Galindo. Thank you, Juan. Reuben Galindo. Yes, Your Honor. You have brought your wife, Nancy Galindo. Yes, Your Honor. To court today. The two of you have been married only four months. Yes, Your Honor. And you are now in divorce court because you say that there are a number of bad habits and problems that are ruining the marriage. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, I'll start with you, sir. Give me some background. My wife has what I believe is a bad gambling addiction problem. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, I believe that uh, with her problem of uh, gambling, that she is also uh, cheating on the side hmm. to support this bad habit. Sir, you... You say she has a bad gambling problem. The two of you have been married for four months, but you've actually been in a relationship for a couple of years. Yes, Your Did you Your know Honor. about this before the two of you got married? Yes, Your Honor. Um, the addiction wasn't as bad as before. Mm -hmm. Previously, it was, I would say, roughly at about $100 a week was her gambling mm -hmm. habit. Now it's up to what I believe is around $600 a week in her gambling. And what do you have to say, Ms. Galindo? Well, I make the money in the family. You know, I work every day. I don't get a day off. I work seven days a week. I have my own cleaning business. Um, I do pretty much what I want with my money. Um, as long as the bills get paid, I really don't see anything wrong with it. Yes, I do gamble, but I do win an awful lot. And I really don't see anything wrong with it because I am still covering expenses. I'm the one making the money here. It, it, but is that because of what happened with the pandemic? Because you were yes, working, you're correct? Yes, sir. But it's only been the last several months that mm -hmm. you have stopped working because of the shutdown, right? Yes, Your Honor. This is really interesting because do you believe you have a, a gambling problem? I don't because if I lose it, I win it back or I work to make up for it. How often are you gambling? Mm, once or twice a day. Every day? Every day. And the two of you live in Vegas, right? Yeah, so it's kind of hard not to gamble. <laughs> so you, you gamble once or twice a day, seven days a week? Um, I usually don't gamble on Mondays because I'm too busy to. <laughs> and how are you managing your business and gambling as well? I go in for like 20 minutes. I play really high. I come out winner. I come out losing. Most, I'd say about 75% of the time I do win. And you don't see that as a problem, just the frequency that you're gambling? I do in some ways, but then um, when I win, I'm like, well, I won, you know, so I really don't feel like it's a problem. You know, I, I have never lost more than I've won. Mm -hmm. So I mean, are, are you losing hundreds of dollars a week? No, whenever I lose, I win back. Eventually? No, when? within the that same week. day? Within that week. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say, sir? Well, there's an episode where I was sick one, day, one time. Um, so during that 24 hour period, um, Prior to me getting sick, um, I checked the bank account. We had a little over $2,000 because I had uh, I put the uh, automobile in repair. Mm -hmm. So the next day I was planning, I made plans to take the uh, car out of the um, shop, repair shop. Mm -hmm. So the next morning when I got up and I checked the banking account statements, $2,000 were missing. Mm -hmm. So I went over to Nancy and asked her, well, what happened to the $2,000 that we had in the banking account? Prior to me getting sick, I ensured that the balance was there. What happened to it? Um, she gave me the excuse that there must have been a bank error or something took place down at the cashier's uh, cage, down at the casino where they had uh, debited too much. But um, she just gave me some excuse of some kind of bank error. Did you lose the $2,000 gambling? 
I didn't have any money enough to cover. Okay, so I had the two thousand dollars, but I didn't have a cover, have enough to cover. Let me ask you something. Was that money set aside for car repairs? I had already paid thirty four hundred dollars on his car. I ju I'm just asking. Was that money yeah, set aside for money, car repairs? It was my money set aside. Yes. Whose money was it? It was her money. It was set aside for car repairs? I had it set aside just in case there was some extra repair money because they said there was something else wrong with the car. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I had no idea it was going to total out to be what it was. Mm -hmm. But I took that, yes, I did take that $2,000, I will mention that, and I did go gamble, but I won back $3,000. When? That day? That day. And did she win $3,000 so you never missed the money? Is that that's what she's uh, saying? Unbeknownst to me, the car is still in the shop, so whether or not she did win the 3000 it was never brought to my attention. And the money was never replaced into the account? Um, it eventually was. She, she does win. She does win. And when she does win, sometimes she'll, she'll be forthcoming with the winnings and sometimes she's not. Mm. And the times that I believe that she's not is to continue to support her addiction to gambling. You know, there's this discussion about your winning and the fact that you win the money back. The bigger issue is whether or not you win it back doesn't mean that you don't have a problem controlling your impulse to gamble because the frequency of your gambling mm -hmm. really speaks volumes about the fact that it's not just a hobby, a pastime, recreational, like so many people um, indulge in in Vegas. It's more of a necessity. She was going for a job interview mm -hmm that happened to be at a casino. Drove out to that location, and lo and behold, she was there engaging with another man. The man that I was talking with had a wife, and his wife was right there before. This is divorce court. We've been around long enough to know those, those factors don't matter. Because I do believe that she's, she has a bad a habit there. I went ahead and uh, gotten out of my way and installed what's called a uh, Find My Mobile device. So basically, it's just an application that you install on the device, and the device allows you to locate the device, what part of town that they're in, how long that they've been there for. It also tells you the route that they took, um, the times that they checked in at that location, and it also gives you a percentage of the battery in case they try and turn around and say, well, my phone was off, that's why you weren't able to locate me. Uh, one day, um, she told me that she was going for a job interview mm -hmm. that happened to be at a um, casino. Mm. Well, later that day, it was roughly around 7 in the evening, I messaged her. I got no response from her, so then I decided to go ahead and engage the Find My Device. Lo and behold, it tracked her down and showing that she had still been there for about roughly 7 hours. I she thought you said it was more so 20, 30 minutes a day. We had had a, a very bad fight the night before. Um, he was very rude to me, very disrespectful. I couldn't handle it. I just needed some space away. I didn't want things to get ugly between us. Mm -hmm. So I basically, I was not missing. He could find me at any point in time. Like, I only had the... Well, you weren't missing, but you lied about where you were and what you No, were I told him I was going to, to an interview at the casino. To, to an interview for a job. Not, yeah. Not it was, just it was 12 there. hours it was at, at a casino. casino gambling. It was at the casino. I was seriously considering leaving him for the things he had sent me mm -hmm. the night before. What was the argument about? Um, he was saying that I was cheating on him, and it was just horrible because I've never, I would never cheat on him. I love him so much. You know, I'd never do that. Why were you accusing her of that? Well, later that evening, I decided to get in my vehicle, drove out to that location, and lo and behold, she was there engaging with another man. And what it looked like to me, he was pretty much purchasing her drinks and supplying her with her gambling habit. And they engaged in the conversation as if they were out on a date. I waited about 10 minutes just to make sure that this was taking place. And sure enough, it, I saw enough that convinced me that she was. She was being flirtatious, and what she was wearing wasn't what I would recommend wearing to an interview. That's a lie. That's a lie. Because the man that I was talking with had a wife, and his wife was right there before. She had just went out to play at another machine. Ms. Galindo, this is divorce court. We've been around long enough to know those, those factors don't matter. I know, but it's not like he was, like, telling me, calling me, like, honey or sugar or baby or anything. He was just buying me drinks, and then I, I, I in return, I had given him some money to put in his machine. So you were, you were sort of hustling for some gambling money? No, I already had money. Your husband has expressed his concern about 
your gambling habit. And I understand you say that you don't have a problem, but it appears that you do. And it obviously, from everything I'm hearing, it is, you you're say you're going to a job interview, but you're at the casino for 12 hours. He shows up at the casino and you're engaging in this flirtatious conversation with another man as he watches, I believe him, and it's hurting your marriage. It's not just financial. It's the dishonesty and it's the lack of an ability to, to control the impulse that you have. And it's disrupting your life. There's no denying that. Your Honor, if I may also add, I've also installed another app on her phone, which is a text messaging forwarding app. And what that app does is it allows her to receive her text messages, but at the that same time... Friend. Well, Mr. Galindo, why are you turning into CSI all of a sudden? <laughs> because, because you've known, never... you've known Ms. He's Galindo for two plus years. Right. Right. This did not just happen over the course of four months right. of your marriage, but now you want to be CSI. When she's missing, it, right. it is not a mystery <laughs> as to where she is. Absolutely. It, so, you're tracking her to the same location repeatedly. Right. What is the point of you doing all of this now? She's always giving me an excuse one after another. She, I can never get the straight answer from her. Well, the text messaging... That's more evidence of someone who has a problem, sir. I'm not an addiction specialist, but I talked to someone who is. Usually, the gambling isn't the problem your habit has just kind of gotten in the way to where gambling has become the primary relationship in your life. And your husband is at home wondering who his wife is out with. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll free 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms. And for exclusive content, go to Apple TV. What made you propose to someone who you knew had this kind of issue without talking to her and having a conversation with her about addressing the issue before moving into marriage? Um, the problems as far as her sneaking around on her gambling were never there. Every time we would go gambling, we were going together. Now it's um, whenever I do go gambling with her, I bring her bad luck that I'm negative about the whole thing. Well, you shouldn't be going to the casino with her at all because the last place, if you, if we're talking about addiction, that's just like taking an alcoholic right. to a bar. I agree with you 100%. The only reason why I go is to try and control the amount of spending that takes place because if I don't go along with her, she's going to go anyways. Okay. Regardless of what I have to say. I have some concerns because you're in denial. And uh, I'm not an addiction specialist, but I talked to someone who is. And he's actually here today. He's been listening to the testimony that both of you had presented. I have uh, Abalash Pulikin with me today. He's a licensed counselor with over 10 years of experience in substance abuse, addiction, and socioeconomic inequities. Mr. Pulikin, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me, Judge Faith. Have you had the opportunity to listen uh, to the testimony that the Galindos have presented in court today? I have. And I think my bigger concern is Ms. Galindo saying she doesn't believe that she has a problem. And I just want to hear from your expert opinion what you think about what you've heard and read because you also read the, the case packet today. Absolutely. I think that when it comes to habits, the way something is defined as a problem can't just be defined by how it affects us. Seeing how your husband has talked about how this has affected you, your marriage, I would say there is a pretty big problem in that your behavior has led to you keeping things from your husband. You know, your habit has just kind of gotten in the way to where gambling has become the primary relationship in your life. It's become your best friend. It's become your therapist. It's become your lover. And your husband is at home wondering who his wife is out with. Yeah. And the answer is, even if it's not with a person, I heard you say you've never cheated on him before. Never. never. Even if you've never stepped out on him with another person before, the habit got in the way. And it's your primary partner now. I agree. So what does she do about it now that she's acknowledging that there is a problem here because I know there's no quick fix. Right. But at least she's taken the step 
in the process of this proceeding to acknowledging that this is a problem. Ms. Galindo, what it's going to take for you is to take the steps that you need to actually find a permanent solution for this problem. Okay. And that's going to involve sitting down with a professional or going to a 12-step group and talking about the things that cause you to turn to gambling. Usually the gambling isn't the problem. It's a symptom of a deeper problem. And so what I'm going to say to you is find a professional or a group of professionals. Okay. And there are lots of ways, lots of people who have supported, you know, who've gone through what you've experienced that will support you through this. And Mr. Galindo, I'm gonna to turn to you and say, I want you to look at your wife's habit, not just as a set of choices, but as a sickness, as an illness. She just doesn't act this way because she doesn't love you or care about you or is doing this to hurt you. Right. There are times this habit is literally out of her control. And the thing that I'm going to say to you is, if you look at your wife and say, this woman is worth it, I wanna be with her for the rest of my life, she's going to need your support. And that's going to require patience and love and a high tolerance for pain. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Pulikin. I appreciate that. My Thank pleasure. you. Thank you very much. <laughs>